Let's bring in Scripps News tonight, medical contributor Dr. Omar Awan. Dr. Awan, around 20 years ago, almost half of people living with HIV in the U.S. were black, according to the CDC. The CDC's website provides a very helpful timeline to understand the fight against HIV and AIDS. It's 2024, and that number still hovers around 40%. Why has this been such a persistent issue for black Americans? I think it's a really complex question and a really complex answer, Christian. I mean, I think there's limited access to high quality health care. I mean, if you take a look at the research, you know, black Americans, you know, disproportionately live in low income households, low income neighborhoods. And that means that, you know, black Americans may not be able to afford medications that may help with their HIV. They may not be able to have transportation that can get them to their doctor's office where they can get treated or even tested. That may mean that even if they can get to the doctor's office, they may not be able to come to a follow up appointment and that can, you know, affect their ability to fully treat the virus. So, you know, there are so many barriers out there and we don't talk about it enough. And these are just tip of the iceberg for some of the major challenges and barriers that black Americans face when dealing with HIV. And I think another consideration really is, you know, systemic racism. We don't talk about this enough as well. You know, you know, this racism has been ingrained in the American history and culture. You look back to, you know, events like the Tuskegee, you know, syphilis project where, you know, mm -hmm. black Americans were given bad treatment, you know, and, you know, bad alternatives. And this has led to severe mistrust in a lot of the black community. And they're hesitant to some extent to accept medical advice from a lot of physicians. So all these things in unison have had a profound effect on some of the disparities that we're now seeing here, even in 2024. Yeah, a complex web indeed. Um, I want to break out a portion of the disproportionality here. Among heterosexual men and women, black women are disproportionately affected with the greatest number of new infections. Just out of curiosity, what's driving that, Dr. Awan? Well, I think it's complex as well, but I think you heard some of it already in, you know, the powerful story that Eric just shared that oftentimes, you know, even black women, a lot of times people don't disclose their you know, HIV status to their partner, right? So oftentimes you may have unprotected sex and it may be possible that, you know, an individual, a male or a female may not disclose their HIV status and then they get infected, right? So this is a very common problem that we're seeing all across the United States. So, uh, you know, I think there needs to be a lot more transparency. I think people need to uh, use condoms when they engage in sexual activity, avoid sharing needles if they're a drug user and really take advantage of pre-exposure prophylaxis. We heard a little bit about it, you know, in Eric's story, but, you know, this is very underused in America. You know, 8% of Black Americans who should be using pre-exposure prophylaxis are using it, compared to 23% of the general population. I mean, 8%. That means 92% of people who should be using pre-exposure prophylaxis for AIDS and HIV are not using it. I think that's a huge opportunity for us to make improvements, and especially with respect to HIV and AIDS. Dr. Awan, I want to um, talk about PrEP here for just a moment. Much of what I hear about PrEP medication comes from my LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters. Um, and this virus isn't exclusive to those communities, but it disproportionately affects gay and bisexual men. Uh, what sort of strides have been made over the years in terms of PrEP medication? Well, first of all, they're widely available. And the other thing is that many insurance companies cover this for free. Medicaid covers this for free, even if you don't have insurance. There are federal programs that allow you to get, you know, PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis for free. And just so people are aware, it involves taking a pill once a day uh, for an extended period of time. Or if you want to take an injection, you can take one injection every other month for pre-exposure prophylaxis. This is a really powerful tool that I think not many people are aware of. And I think that we need to be more vigilant in publicizing this pre-exposure prophylaxis. And pretty much if you have had sexual intercourse in the last six months, you're HIV negative, but your partner is HIV positive, you qualify. You absolutely qualify to get pre-exposure prophylaxis. So that's the message here. Don't be afraid to get it. Inquire about it. Ask your doctor about it. And please uh, take the opportunity to get pre-exposure prophylaxis. Dr. Awan, as always, many thanks for your time and your medical expertise. We appreciate it. My pleasure.